Um, so yeah, welcome to LEAP's uh, F1 in Schools presentation. Uh, today we're going to go through probably just uh, the some basic car aerodynamics um, and we're going to talk a bit about CFD, uh, what CFD is used for and, and what's used for in the context of F1 in Schools and, and take you through AIM software which is a easy to use software that we have here um, that's going to do a, a CFD run on, on an F1 in Schools vehicle. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, so my background is is um, an aerospace engineering degree. I designed the aero, aerodynamics for, uh, kit for this vehicle here um, last year, and Hashan, who's with us, uh, also um, designed his own vehicle aerodynamics kit for a Formula SA vehicle in 2015-16. So race car aerodynamics, as you guys would probably know by now, it's a complex uh, process, and it, it it's highly what we call non-linear which means that the changes that you make to an aerodynamics kit can't really be predicted in standard ways uh, you have to kind of have really good um, analysis tools to actually be accurate in your predictions about what aerodynamic components are going to do on you know on a vehicle or on a plane or, or on anything um, but the aim is to identify particular features in the flow um, and to utilize them to create forces on the body and those forces will um, change the performance characteristics of, of the vehicle. So the biggest um, and most fundamental, uh, I think, principle to aerodynamics is, is the Bernoulli effect. It's what every aerodynamicist learns, first, first aerodynamics class. And it's basically uh, kind of centers around the pressure in the air and how we can manipulate the characteristics of the air to create certain forces. So if you look on the right hand side, the total pressure in the air, which stays constant in our case, um, is equal to the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure. Now the static pressure is the pressure that is acting on us all times. It's acting uh, on the front of us, the back of us, it's equal all around and it's that's the atmospheric pressure. And dynamic pressure is pressure that air has when it's got a velocity okay now like I said that total pressure remains constant so if we blow on our hands you can feel a force pushing against your hand and that's because we're stopping the air so what we're doing is we're decreasing the velocity so when we decrease the velocity for the total pressure to remain constant the static pressure has to increase now we can do that to increase the pressure and we can do that to decrease the pressure so when we look at here the streamlines around an airfoil that's staying attached, those, if we look at the bottom picture, those streamlines that are staying attached, the ones that go over the top have to travel further than the ones around the bottom. So essentially that air will travel faster. And if that air travels faster, that means the static pressure has to go down. So that's how we create lift. So the resultant force on the wing will be up in, that, in, in this instance. Uh, now, the second flow feature we want to talk about today is separation. Uh, now, for me, I think separation is the limiting or the deciding performance factor. As you can see, if the flow is separated, we're not necessarily going to get that same kind of change in velocity at the surface as we are in the bottom picture. Um, and so we'll lose that lifting effect. And that's what's called stall in, it, in, in uh, aviation aerodynamics or in car aerodynamics as well. And so where the, where the flow will separate, once again, like I said, will decide the performance of that aerodynamic component. Um, and not only that, but when we do separate, we see the separation bubble. When we're traveling through the air and the flow has separated in behind, we're dragging all of that separated air behind us. And that air is quite turbulent, which means it's very chaotic. It's moving around in all directions. So we're essentially losing energy our forward momentum energy to the flow that's really turbulent in that separation bubble behind us. So for a low drag configuration, we want as little separation as possible. For a high downforce or a high force configuration, we want as little separation as possible and as high a velocity. In the areas we want low pressure, of course. Another flow feature is, this one's a bit more complex in aerodynamics, it's called a vortex. Um, we know vortexes in, in our day-to-day -day life when we're stirring our tea. Um, you can see the vortexes coming off the, off the spoon. They're a good one to show, uh, show the kids uh, to better understand what they are. 
Um, they're coming off plane wings and they've pretty much come off every kind of lifting surface because they're created really by a pressure differential between close faces. So the, the air that's on the high pressure side will want to spin round into the air onto the low pressure side and as it travels longitudinally, it's spinning and in a, in a vortex fashion, right? Now those things we can use um, in the car aerodynamics, we try and use them to keep flow attached uh, in certain circumstances. But what they are is they're quite a um, high drag uh, feature as well because the energy that you take that you're using to spin that is coming out of your forward momentum again. That's why aircraft have a lot of uh, complex designs on their wing tips to try and reduce those vortices to reduce the drag and increase the efficiency of their wings. So it's something that we'd probably want to decrease the the um, instance of in, in an F1 for schools car as well.